Hey, it's Mark from Mulligan Concept Teachers Association, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about snags versus transverse snags in the cervical spine, and when I tend to transition. So many times, um, you know, we're looking for that symptom-free response with, let's say, cervical rotations, very commonly a, uh, aggravating movement. And uh, I'll start with snags um, on the same side as the symptoms. And I'll try to have that person move in the direction of their provocation with an attempt to eliminate the symptoms with turning. If they tell me that they still have pain with my cervical snag, my first question back to them is, is your pain above or below my hand placement? So I'll keep my hands right on there like I'm, I'm doing my snag. And I'll say, is your pain above or below my hand? If they say below, I'll move down. If they say below, I'll keep moving down. But at some point, I'll switch to a transverse snag. And for me, that usually happens around the C6 level. Oftentimes with people, when I get to that C6 level, um, you know, I find the transverse snag, C6 on, and C7, to be more effective than a cervical snag. Not always, and it depends on the shape of the person. But uh, consider that if you're moving down and you're not getting the effect that you hope for with your cervical snag, remember that transverse snag, and I think you'll have a lot of good success. Happy snagging.